What's up, guys? My name is Brennan. I'm joined with Trent, and this is Rico. What's up, guys? Got a lot to cover today. Today we'll be covering Overwatch and League of Legends. Uh, lots of news to go over, so we'll go ahead and start off with Trent. What's happening in League of Legends? All right, so a lot of stuff big happened in League the past week. Everyone who is playing it knows that a huge patch dropped. Uh, lots of big changes in it. The AP itemization changes, uh, the tracker's knife removal from the jungle, uh, other champion changes specifically, lots of buffs, uh, nerfs. Top lane got hit pretty big. Jungle, um, some champions got changed a little bit more. Like I already brought up, mid lane is going to have huge itemization changes, which will lead to a lot of new champions showing up in competitive games. Mm -hmm. ADCs aren't affected. It, I mean, really, ADCs might be affected by the changes in like different priorities from pro players, mm -hmm. but you're not going to see any change, I don't think, from itemization that would bring up any big ADCs, at least directly. I think Wits End got buffed, so Kogma and Varus get stronger. Yeah, as if they needed it because they were already <laughs> oppressive and really boring to watch. But as a Varus main, I am a okay. I don't <laughs> like you since you're a Varus main. You're awesome. that champ is so boring. If if I wanted Lucian buffs, if we got Lucian buffs, I've been so happy. That's, uh, that's fair. That's fair. But... So what exactly? So let's talk about Tracker's knife that being removed. What is that going to change in the jungle? Okay, so with Tracker's Knife going away, we're looking at more, uh, well, we're looking at only Challenging Smite and uh, Chilling Smite. Mm -hmm. So we're going to see a lot more Assassin's Jungles and Carry Junglers because the tanks that could utilize the vision so well to just safely go ward, they have no point for that. Mm -hmm. And the, the lack of vision makes playing an Assassin much more uh, rewarding because now you can sneak up on enemy players, they won't know you're there as much because... Vision got out of hand this season. With the zombie ward, with the tracker's knife, with the sight yeah. stone changes, Vision is really out of hand. So with this being nerfed, it's going to be basically your support can ward. Junglers are going to have to keep their yellow trinket, which already will be less wards, even if they had a tracker's knife compared to yellow trinket. They're still going to have less wards. You're going to have less oracles on the map to get rid of wards. So it's going to be way more important where you ward, mm -hmm. and it's going to be so much easier to sneak around the map but it's also not to the point i don't think where vision's going to be so scarce that you're just scared to do anything okay but it's gonna i think it's gonna reward these new assassin or not these new assassin players or these assassins coming up in the meta that we haven't seen in a while or at least if we have we have not seen them be successful that's fair yeah for sure for sure awesome yeah i definitely agree that sounds fun and i'm about to break out diana in some jungle it sounds like that's what oh you're god telling please me. that's what you're telling no. me that's awesome. okay with that being said i'm a happy person because rengar got rever his rework reverted so his q really? his q which was that aoe slash stuff whatever mm -hmm. that was that was awful it's now back to the auto attack reset so the jump out of stealth auto q empowered q that burst is back and adcs are being deleted and i'm so happy to see it after seeing adcs be dominant as long as they have been Hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll move it's away not from fun. ADC then. It's not fun for ADCs <laughs> in any way, but it's fun for me to yeah. see him get deleted awesome. and to see them rage in all chat. Very cool. Very cool. Well, with all the patch and all that, um, we've got a lot of new announcements from um, Rift Rivals, Worlds, all that stuff. So take us through that. Okay. So they announced, I think, yesterday or the day before that, mm -hmm. that all the locations for the events, and Riot's been getting a lot of flack lately about not announcing their events closer to when the date is due, because well, that way third-party journalists and all that stuff, they can't make these, or at least they have to pay extra to make it on shorter notice. Yeah, for sure. So they announced their full slate of schedules for the next um, year until Worlds, or until All-Stars, excuse me. Okay. So mid-season invitational, um, that's going to be the first part of it, the groups, is going to be in Germany, the normal EU LCS studio. But then they're going to have a venue in Paris this year. Okay, that's cool. And that'll be for the finals and semifinals. So hmm. that'll be a fun weekend in Paris. Um, 
no bias, but I hope Misfits makes it just so I can see the crowd freak out again for Han Sama like they did in finals because I love seeing it when the players from a team go to their home stadium. Mm -hmm. Like I remember uh, season six finals, Cloud not season six summer finals, I want to say Cloud Nine and TSM went to Toronto. Mm -hmm. And there were so many players on that team who are Canadian that it was just it was awesome to see like them all wearing their flags. I just think that's a really cool thing. Oh yeah. Because like sure. with the esports scene growing to see like players be proud to represent their country and their country proud that they're from that, that's yeah. just awesome when you compare it to, you know, season one freak's basement. Like yeah. that just says a lot. Freak's mom's basement, excuse me. Yeah. Not even his own, his mom's basement. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely cool to see just all around esports, um, the different venues and seeing tournament. CSGO is one of the ones that I'm most familiar with. Um Anytime there was a tournament in Poland, one of the Polish teams would end up winning just because the crowd was just insane. Not so much now, but yeah. it's just, it's crazy. Like the previous major that was in Boston, Cloud9 ended up winning. Now, do I think home field advantage is a thing? A little bit, not a huge deal, but it's definitely cool to see the crowd just go bananas over their home team. And that's something that I'm actually yeah. pretty excited just to put in a little forward um, about Overwatch because they're actually supposed to end up having home stadiums and they'll be Are traveling. They really? Yeah. That's what I is. ooh I don't know how I feel about it. I want to be really excited about that but mm -hmm. you'd have to change the schedule cuz esports works because you can cram in so many games in a weekend like teams can play two or three games so that's so the thing is you'd have to stretch out seasons to let like these double round robin formats keep going because like mm -hmm. in LCS or in Overwatch a team plays twice in a week well here's the thing too you can't travel and play twice in a week that sounds miserable well, here's, here's the counter-argument, and I think this is what they're going to end up going with. If you look at... Because their whole thing about Overwatch League is they're trying to be more like modern sports, right? Yeah. Modern sports, professional players, they travel all the time. They travel they the do. next day, and then they play the next day. And honestly, if it's all within the U.S., I don't think that would be a huge deal. Um, the only thing that I have questions about, because there is the Seoul Dynasty, the Shanghai Dragons, so I don't think there's going to be any possible way that they're going to have home stadiums there. I don't mind the home stadium thing. I just think you're going to have to cut back on the games to one once a week. And then maybe maybe they increase the amount of rounds in the series. So instead of it being a best, uh, what is it? It's like a four round thing right now. Yeah, it's four rounds. Yeah, it's, it's Maybe they actually make it a more five. final decision and make it like best of seven. It's possible. It's definitely Maybe possible. that would be. Everything's still I just, up in the air, but that's I know yeah. for a fact that's something that they've talked about multiple times. The oh, uh, I've I've loved the idea of having localized teams for a while. Like I really want it. I oh, dude, it sounds great. awkward because like esports. The other good thing about it is you can be a fan of a team and not even have anything to do with them affiliation wise. Mm -hmm. And for professional sports, there's sometimes that issue. Like I'm a Seahawks fan, as you know, and mm -hmm. it's super awkward being a Thunderhawk fan and a Seahawks fan. But yeah, Thunderhawks fan, yeah. But with uh, with esports, you don't have that issue. Like, I'm have a bigger bias towards Cloud Nine and Misfits, and I have no connection to either of those teams ge geographically. But it's just I like the way they play. I like their organization mm -hmm, for sure. So that's my only argument against localization. But if done right, I feel like you can bring in huge swaths of a fan base. Like, look oh, at Clutch Gaming be... and League. Look mm -hmm. at Clutch Gaming and League already. They're like by the Houston Rockets. They're owned by them. Mm -hmm. not only are they having a successful season i think a huge part of it is just like central america like not central america but like central usa players mm -hmm. have always felt underrepresented because you know tsm cloud nine clg they're all like west coast lifestyle and this is like all right all these players don't necessarily represent houston lifestyle but they're mm -hmm. Just the fact that they're owned by them, it makes people want to be a bigger part of that fan base. For sure. And I think that's a big thing, too, is like how I think the support in general will go up for Overwatch League. Just if they are able to pull that off. Just because, again, you could go up to anyone and be like, hey, did you mm -hmm. know we have an Overwatch League team? And they'd be like, what are you talking about? And then you take them to the venue, you go sit them down for a game, and then you have a new fan. Not yeah. always, but it's just it makes it so much easier, I feel like, than saying, here, watch this stream. Yeah, watch this thing. I watch this video I found on YouTube. Yeah, watch this thing I've been watching like, for five hours, and yeah, so I definitely I think it's a think very, very cool thing that uh, could be coming up. So I do through. think that um, a huge, huge boost to all esports would be it to be more readily available for all people to go watch it live, because mm -hmm. that's how all sports grow. And sure. I think if people could go see it live, that's why I've 
I keep hoping that Riot has a finals in Dallas or Houston or anywhere near us because if <laughs> they had a league finals there, I would 100% pay for that ticket oh, to travel sure. down there and go see one live. I don't even care to, uh, California if teams. One. I don't even care if teams I like are playing. And see, that's the thing is like, I think sometimes this summer I might be going to California and I've already. Done Right. If I go, I for sure need to go on a weekend to go see Cloud9 and mm-hmm. TSM and all these teams play that I've, you know, spent the last four years watching yeah. in some capacity or another. For sure, for sure. Yeah, I have but, um, high hopes for Along it. with the MSI announcement, they, like I said, announced all the other ones. So basically, uh, EU NA Rift Rival is going to be in USA. China, Korea, LMS is going to be in China. Brazil, Latin North, Latin South are all uh, going to be in Brazil. It's just like all these events are announced, and after getting so much flack these past few months for not announcing stuff sooner, I'm really happy with Riot because mm-hmm. they have been killing memes lately, and this is just another thing down. But this one's actually really important because for anyone who covers this stuff, to get it sooner means they don't have to spend as much, which means their content from it can be even better. Yeah, for sure. So really good news. Yeah, that's awesome. Worlds sure. is going to be back in South Korea, which was <laughs> really? famous season four. Mm-hmm. So that, I mean, that's where the uh, war or Warriors, Imagine Dragons, if you guys were into it at all in that capacity back then, mm-hmm. that's where it was during the Warriors era. So that's pretty exciting. And cool. even the artwork for the announcement looks similar to the music video art, which is pretty cool. Very neat. Very neat. One second. Okay, sorry about that. All good, all good. All right. So, yeah, kind of piggybacking off of that, uh, other news in League, uh, Loco Doco. What's going on? Oh, with that? boy. <laughs> Loco Doco, my favorite. Um, honestly, the drama behind it isn't as huge as one would like. I mean, not necessarily one would like, but so he got fired from Golden Guardians. Four mm. weeks in, the team was doing terribly already, but he got fired, and it was really short notice. It was like the night before their games, and all it said was, for internal affairs or something along those lines. And everyone was speculating like what he did, and he has a history, like with Team Liquid Breaking Point mm-hmm. and with all his comments prior to that, all his inappropriate work comments. Everyone was like, what did he do this time? Yeah. Because Golden Guardians ain't messing around. They're do- they're owned by the Golden State Warriors. They're gonna fire you if you say anything inappropriate. Yeah. So he finally tweeted out last night after about two or three weeks of waiting that and there wasn't much information here for the situation but that he was let go by the golden guardians because he made an inappropriate comment during an interview he didn't say what the comment was no one knows how extreme it was but he appreciated the uh, time with the golden guardians and everything they let him learn hmm. so basically my issue isn't necessarily what he said or what he did i want to know if loco doco gets one more chance like does yeah. someone let him coach their team again because He's had some success. He had TSM when they were, I think, when they did go to IEM Katowice and they won that event. I think Mm -hmm. he was coaching the team then. But since I've been watching League and I've started watching like right after that, that man has done nothing. Like I've never seen him own a team or not own a team, coach a team successfully. And the only thing I do remember from Loco Doco is him utterly failing to get um, Goldcoin United into the LCS with Santorin, Phoenix, I think it had solo like he he had a pretty good roster with challenger series mm. and all he had to do was beat a few bottom tier in lcs team didn't do that and that's not a, and then worst of all is the team liquid breaking point with yeah Dardock, piglet phoenix and logo doko heading it's it all video to watch if you have it's a it, fun video to watch it. but the fact that someone let him coach again much less an nba lcs like a nba lcs team let him coach their team is mm. beyond me yeah, for sure. So I don't really get that, especially one that's so hell-bent on developing players. Mm-hmm. If you want to develop players, why would you put someone who's so poor at being an adult himself? For sure. Because that's, that's the definitely... whole Golden Guardian's infrastructure. Sorry, yeah. go on. It's definitely interesting, especially with his statement and how he's breaking ties. It's very, seems like he's just cutting his losses type yeah. of statement, and it's maybe he does learn something because it does sound like it's a yeah. mat- i'll be honest it sounds like a mature statement it's I a mean, mature it's, statement it's, it's very, very PR. it is for i just sure. i just want to know what he does in the future if he mm. gets to do anything at all my best bet is he gets to go because a lot of people say the reason he's such a good coach is because he speaks korean mm. that's not a thing anymore we yeah. have reaper we have song we have 
all these good Korean coaches and all these good Korean translators. Mm. This isn't season three anymore. We don't need someone who can speak Korean so we can have a decent import. For sure. Koreans yeah. have been successful in other countries or in the other regions for a long time now. They're not winning finals, but mm-hmm. definitely better than needing a Korean coach just to integrate them at all. Yeah, that's that's true. And to kind of piggyback off that, just in general with esports, I'm very, very, very ready for the day that comes yeah, yeah. when there aren't these entitled players and entitled coaches who think I'm good at a video game, so what you say doesn't matter. Because even oh, like, God, even, I can't wait. Yeah, because eventually, I mean, eventually the talent pool will kind of what I think will end up happening is kind of level out. I think mm-hmm. we're going to see this in League pretty soon because with all the imports and all that stuff, eventually there's going to be someone that's better than you or just as good. And if you have an attitude, they're going to go with that player, you know? Yeah. And I'm ready for that kind of competition because I feel like that'll project the entire scene of esports in general forward into being a way more professional, way more less toxic community. Yeah. That's, that's example I can't all the way down the line. Either. So I think that's something that is something for us to strive for as people in esports and just – in general is to advocate for those players that have a good mental for assistant sure. and i mean you're already starting to see that trend so like mm-hmm. on cloud nine uh reaper is the head coach there and he was a lck top laner he made finals in season one mm-hmm. so that's like that's not that monumental of a thing but he's such a good player everyone on c9 has so much respect for uh reaper mm-hmm. and like you see that in other places like lyra on clutch gaming back formerly known as envy he was called the player's coach, even if he wasn't like, or you know, he was probably the best jungler in NA. Everyone looked up to him. And even now you see Dardoch, who with the mentoring of Rick Fox and with the, like being under the wing of Hooney, he is really seeming to calm himself down. And I'm really mm-hmm. excited for that because this isn't just a like, oh, you're toxic. We're going to go with the other guy. This could make those toxic players less like toxic. This could make everyone better, and that improves the strength of all the teams. And I'm always an advocate for having parity in your league because mm-hmm. the stronger every team is, the stronger and more fun the league is, and it's better to watch. So yeah. there is no losers as everyone gets more mature. Yeah, it's definitely good to hear that Dardark's maturing as well. Because I remember mm-hmm. watching that Breaking Point video of him actually like talking back to the owner of Team Liquid. And it's like, yeah. Man, if that happened in any other industry, he'd be cut immediately. Mm, yeah, no I know. No question right? about it. He'd be fired. He'd be on some kind of leave or anything. Like, he would not be playing that same day. So, that was definitely like it. I remember watching that in my bed. I was just laying down. I was like, what the heck? Like, I couldn't imagine talking to the person who pays my paycheck. Right? Like, yeah, who pays him as much money as he made. Mm-hmm. High school or college kid. I shouldn't say that because that goes for any act, but still i don't know the fact that they made a feature-length film about the drama of dardock and piglet and doka it i get what you're saying in the nfl and nba not fired everyone who caused drama on that team would have been fired loco would have been fired dardock would have been fired piglet would have been fired doesn't matter how big they were if they're causing so much strife and so much failure it's i don't know it's just insane to me so really kind of off topic in a way but at the same time like like how does Loco keep getting coaching? Does he does he have gainful employment come next season? Mm-hmm. And my best bet is not as a head coach. Yeah. Maybe as an analyst for a team or maybe a translator, but I don't see any reason why a team would want to hire him as their head coach. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just can't see that. Um for sure, for sure. We're up coming up on getting a little short on time. We're about 20 minutes in. So what we'll go ahead and do, we'll hop over to the highlights for this uh, last week. We've got our expert okay. analyst, Trent, here, who uh, picked up a few oh, different my ones. expert analysis, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah classic. Really cool so let's go on over to the uh, highlight reel. <laughs> All right, so now it's time for the highlight reel. Uh, we've got a few clips picked out by Mr. Trent here. we got some really cool plays um, all across. Do we have any from EU's LCS? I don't remember. Uh, yeah, yeah. The uh, last one is going to be EU LCS. Sadly, I didn't do any LCK or clips. I just mm-hmm. stuck to NA EU this week um, for the pilot episode. I figured that'd be best for yeah. what I'm most familiar with, the things I actually got to watch live. Yeah, for sure. 
Yeah, but we'll go ahead and jump straight into this. This mm-hmm. is uh, what teams are playing on this first clip. Uh, Golden Guardians versus CLG. So obviously, or not obviously, the bottom tier of the NALCS. But I just thought, A, those players won't get enough recognition. And B, this is a really good play Mm -hmm. by Matt, of all people, who probably one of the most, not underrated supports, underperforming supports. Not underrated. He hasn't been good lately. But Mm -hmm. this play, the dude's got some game knowledge, at the very least. Or he got really lucky timing did one way or the other i think he saved this game for his team at the very least made them win in this one play awesome so we'll go ahead let's just okay so basically uh clg started this band and you'll see right here he going back and exhaust the first step in clg's team so that makes go in not doing enough damage and they don't get to with him doing that he's able to run in there and it's kind of gets the last auto but since he did that their entire play was messed up the entire baron still or not baron still the entire baron secure with a callista that should be safe was completely thrown off because of that exhaust and that less like less game so that was insanely good by him i feel like he completely make sure the game was really and the fact that he steals it is like he take and then contracts the very young jumps in with a clean double play in the pocket Definitely great play. And yeah, and then I think later on they just run it right down mid with stuff and win the game. So that was pretty intense, pretty good game to watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that um, was a super heads up play. Um, mm-hmm. Definitely something beyond my level. Yeah, for real. I wouldn't ever think. I I want to believe. Just the uh, optimist in me wants to think. All right, Matt was like, I'm gonna exhaust this Callista and mess up their entire play. Not he was exhausting Callista to prevent damage, and he just yeah, accidentally yeah. happened into the best, just, like one of the better exhaust, band skills exhaust, I've seen. Exhaust, please. Yeah, like I'm really hoping it wasn't an accident for it to be that good. But... Basically, me when I'm a support. All right, so what's our next video? What, what two teams are playing on this one? Um, I believe the next video is going to be TSM versus Optic. It was their second game of this week, so yeah, it was TSM Optic, and. For a slumping TSM, they had their comeback week this week because they had two a week before, but it wasn't convincing. Their two wins this week against Echo Fox and Optic were really convincing. So this is going to be in the bottom lane. Gotcha. Very minions come up. They'll be able to slalom in and out of these. And it's basically a good team to hops against the last one. This should have been two free kills for Optic. Doesn't want that damage to come through. But Yurikin hops the Seraph. Gets a huge steal. They see the lock in. Nano flashes in and ults the Optic player into the wall. It was just an insane 2v4. They just turned the game in their favor. Sadly, Yurikin did not check the wall. Really hoping to kill Aero. Like, that would have been really good, but he just between is the meatball uh, doesn't want that damage to come Baron. through. That tankiest person goes down first, and here goes the rest of them. It's going to be a lot of damage on the power. We will haunt to look to lock this one down for himself. And it's definitely some of them. I'm pretty sure right after this, they take the Baron, they push it right down. It's kind of like the last time I just said. They take the Baron, they push it down there, they win the Baron. Really, as an impressive guy, especially as a person, and as an answer flash, the rest Ooh, that was so cool. That was just so good. It's going to be a lot of damage on the power. We will haunt looks to lock this one I, down I for love, himself. And he just pounces on Megan his target. I hate so boring to watch. TSM I play love, with their food. You know, Megan Ark can be so much fun to spectate. Mm-hmm. For sure, for sure. Yeah, it's definitely... Uh... <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm gonna agree with you there. I was like, the entire time, I was like, throw that Q. Throw that Q into there. You can do yeah. it. But uh, sadly, he did not. Oh, well, but we'll move on. Uh, what's this mm-hmm. next clip? This next clip from uh, EU, I strongly advise everyone, we're going to show you yourself if you want to hear some quality casting. Repeat Draco's... yourself one time because you cut out for a second there. Okay, I strongly advise everyone go watch the YouTube highlight of this clip because uh, we're going to show you the clip but no audio. Dracos elevated himself to probably one of the best casters in EU. He... My man went so hype. He is such a good caster, and he always has been. But mm-hmm. he brought a, he went above and beyond hype wise. Are you gonna put on audio? I don't think I have the audio on this one. Okay, well that's fine. Like I said, everyone can just go check it out. I'll tell you what game it is. It's gonna be the H2K versus the um, Giants 
game, I want to say. Calista brings it I want to say it's H2K versus get it. Giants. So the Giants now just, just a seven-minute game. Now they're using the Tarkal, and they, they got two and a half seconds to cut You'll through the base. It looks like it may just be enough time, but suddenly the fight is starting to break out. They're looking for a chance to break this one back. Betsy is in the middle of everybody, and he's not going to get taken down quite yet. Sheriff wants to redeem himself. Selfie pushing in. Bruin going to get down and straight in. Targamus wants to bring it home. I don't know if he's going to get it. Who is going to end the game? Targamus wants to bring it in. Bruin goes down. What is this? Oh, my God. That is fucking beautiful. H2K to the game. Uh, Selfie for me, he keeps being top and quirky, Calista and they win the game. Though. Manages really? to get it. Yes, they now straight up win this game. Now they're going to be the slow seeds down, they're using the Targult, and they got 2.5 seconds to cut through the base, and it looks like it may just be enough time, but suddenly the fight is starting to break out, they're looking for a chance to break this one back, Betsy's in the middle of everybody, and he's not going to get taken down quite yet, Sheriff wants to redeem himself, Selfie pushing in, Ruin going to get down and straight in, Targamus wants to bring it home, I don't know if he can, are you kidding me? Ruin is going to end the game, Targamus wants to bring it in, Ruin goes down, what is this? God, H2K, that is fucking yeah, beautiful! Zaya, H2K, I like watching Zaya do the base defense. That elevated, like that's mm -hmm. the pinnacle of Zaya play. I've not been so excited to watch a Zaya just late game team fight as then. Sure. But those are the highlights. Um, yeah. This... All in all, my favorite has got to be. It's up there between the Zaya and the. Um, Tom Kinch steal mm -hmm. in isolation without the audio. I like the map play a lot. I really want to believe it was just smart thinking. And I like that smart, decisive thinking over the really clean mechanical play. Mm -hmm. I know that makes me an outlier in league. Like lots of people like the ribbon, you know, shy combo, all that stuff. Yeah. I like the thinking aspect of the Tom Kinch. But with that being said, when you add the audio in, easily it's that Zaya play. Cause I promise you, Draco's freaking out. We'll just get you hype. Like it just raises your pressure in the best kind of way yeah it's definitely is awesome clip to see all around some really good clips this week uh i'm ready for next week though as we uh, get more and more into this um, yeah so what we'll do uh i'll link a straw poll up above we're gonna do a vote on all three of these clips the best league of legends clip of the last week and then what we'll do we'll show the winners on twitter or something like that later and there'll be a link in the description as well remind me to do that but yeah that's awesome Got you. but yeah that's i think what else do we have oh well we if you're excited fantasy. for highlights if you're excited for highlights next week might be really good because there are two games that i'm really excited for going into next week and like mm -hmm. i said i promise i'll have an lck clip next time too i think all i'll try and do is have an na eu and LCK clip um of the most hype plays unless one region is just totally boring garbage then i'll tackle that when i come to it that's fair but in lck on monday the 5th is going to be king zone dragon so the best performing team in north korea right now mm -hmm. in south korea excuse me i don't know why i said that <laughs> sorry Go excuse on. me the best performing team in south korea king zone dragon against mm -hmm. skt obviously the favorites of everything with faker yeah. So SKT is back on the climb. They're doing really well again. They got the new players, Thal and Blossom. I think Thal is their top Blossom is their jungle. Mm -hmm. And they are popping off. They are, their five, their record is 5-5 five, five grand total. They are on a 4-1. That's the last five games. Mm -hmm. They've only lost one. And two of these players are rookies. Wow. Two of these players have never played. They're just playing with SKT and they're destroying people. And then, awesome. I don't know if you follow Korea at all, Brennan. No. King Zone Dragon is old long zoo game. The one that was at Worlds, you know, the Blue Dragon. Yeah. So they have players like Khan. They took Peanut from uh, SKT. Okay. And then they have Prey and Gorilla in the bot lane. So. Oh wow. It's insane how yeah. loaded that team is, and Khan's hmm. the guy who's driven in LCK and stuff. Hmm. So I'm excited for that match. Yeah. Could it sure. be a stomp? Could King Zone absolutely stomp SKT? Absolutely. I don't think it could go the other way around. I don't think SKT ever stomps King Zone. Mm -hmm. But there is the chance that it is just a great killer match, and I can't wait for that one. Yeah, that's definitely exciting. Well, on the back end of that, since uh, we had a lot of good performances and whatnot, let's talk about fantasy. All what right, are some of fantasy. those outliers? What's going to get us into uh, the top of the uh, fantasy chain this week? Okay, well, if you want to be a money ball player, I'm a big picks are out, Bjergsen, um, double lift, all that stuff. You're not picking what I want you to do is I want you to go into your free agents category on Fantasy League. I want you to go look up Apollo, Hakuo, anyone who is on Clutch Gaming. Because I'll tell you what, 
I have that team ranked high. A lot of people are dogging on them, and I'm not saying they're favorites to win finals. They play some clean games. They play uh, really hard, and they are all just consistent and good. Mm-hmm. So if you need that extra boost, if your flex player is just not doing it for you, I'm sure Febvin has already been picked up in most everyone because he's so good in EU. Mm-hmm. But Apollo, one of the most consistent AD carries, I'd rank him like within the top tier, probably like right under Sneaky, Double F, and Zven. Like I'd rank him second tier probably. Okay. And then Solo, he was really looked down upon when he came into LCS. He's been doing great. Like he's been consistent as gets. It's it's been fun watching them. Mm-hmm. Another good player to pick up if he's free still, which he might not be, is Cody Sun on 100 Thieves. That bot lane is finally coming into fruition. He had a pop-off week last week. I think they play two harder games. But the good thing about harder games is they can be very messy games. They can have lots of kills on both sides, mm-hmm. get you lots of points. Fantasy League doesn't punish you for death as much as it should, what I have to say. So I'm really excited if to see if they just do really well this week. For sure, for sure. I will say, if you're still holding on to hope, as I have been for the past six weeks, drop CLG. Let the faith die. All right. They officially are tied with Golden Guardians as the last place team in NALCS. I had rain over since week one. I was hyping and hyping and hyping. I can't hype anymore. CLG's dead, dude. They'll come back. Franchising is going to keep them safe, and I'm sure they will make a comeback. I don't know whose fault it is. I'm not going to go pointing fingers. I'm just going to say CLG as a team is dead this season, dead in the water. Let them let them go. Just let the hope go. Get yourself a new jungler. See if you can maybe fool someone in your league that no CLG is going to have their comeback and trade Rain over for Mike Young. I don't know what you're going to do, but get rid of your CLG players now and it's funny you mentioned that because i'm just looking at my uh, own fantasy league here and both my i have two clg players who i'm sorry in biofrost Ooh, yeah then we got, you're gonna, we got a good you're old 12 lose? points from biofrost and a good 19 points from uh who he yeah it's really sad because week, i'm sorry uh, that was last week i already them. lost i only lost by like 10 points if i would have had anyone else i would have won that week but uh, i've seen your fantasy league brennan you are unlucky you are the last place with the oh, third most man. points I'm like, getting... you are in last place in our league with third most points. It's actually insane how unlucky you are. Yeah. And if you look at any of my games, I had, so here's the biggest thing. I had Aphromoo in for all, the longest time, just hoping, mm-hmm. just hoping. And finally, I said, enough's enough. And as soon as I take him out, their bot lane pops off. Yep. Yep. I'm so. calling it, dude. That's how, that's how it works. Fantasy players know when they're not getting played and they just go hard. Basically. So... I'll cut my losses this season. I won last season, so I can mm-hmm. take a break. <laughs> Ooh, far I did forget I another good game this weekend coming up, uh, storyline wise, maybe not placement wise, that fourth and fifth place teams in the NALCS. Mm-hmm. This weekend, Saturday the 3rd, check out Team Liquid versus 100 Thieves. The storyline going into that is huge. So, Team Liquid is Double Lift Ole, and 100 Thieves' spot lane is Cody Sun Aphromoo. Mm-hmm. So, you got old ADCs versus their supports. Cody Sun played with Ole. Aphromoo played with Double Lift. Hmm. I'm really excited, and they're both on an upward. Actually, Team Liquid's kind of on a neutral trend at best, but 100 Thieves back on an upward trend. That's the decider match of who's going to end up getting placed a little bit higher going into the last few weeks of LCS. That'll hmm. be a really good game to watch. That sounds very, very fun. I like the uh, drama there. Mm-hmm. That's some good, juicy stuff. I gotta say, I'm a I'm against the double lift train, so I'm hoping I can see 100 Thieves come out on top, but either way, that game's gonna be really hyped to just see all these old teammates and players going against each other. Mm-hmm. For sure, for sure. Awesome. I think that's gonna do it for our league section of this uh, good old vodcast, but that was definitely some good stuff there. I appreciate you coming on and giving your uh, beautiful insight into all that. My beautiful silver advice, oh, yes. Beautiful. I know that... Hey, I'm ranking up. I'm working towards gold, especially now if those rain guard changes. I'll be there in a few weeks. Don't you worry. <laughs> Not even a few weeks. Give me two, and I'll Give you be two. there. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So we'll head over <laughs> to get some Overwatch news in. Um, Ooh. This is where I enjoy a bit of analyzing and... Well, hi. Oh, hi. Hey, doggo. I know, I know, I know. All right, go lay down. <laughs> You're a good girl. Okay, you're going to sit here with me. You're going to analyze with me. 
Sadly, I don't know as good, if I'm as good a host. I mean, but I'll do my. Ah, oh, you're all good. Questions. So yeah, the going. biggest thing. Um, some news coming back from last week. We got QC QCK. It's hard to say QCK coming back from his ban. Um, I don't know if you know this, but that was the tank player for the Dallas Fuel. Um, he yes, was banned I... for the remainder of stage one after some not so nice comments on his stream. So I'm not was... gonna lie. I remember when I saw that news. I think it was on like stage one. Wow, that's like spring split, right? That's gonna be so long. And then stage one was like a month. I'm like, okay, yeah. that's actually like not as scary as I thought it was gonna be. Yeah, like, I thought I the dude's thought career was... was over when I first read the news, and then I got to more understanding of Overwatch League, and it was like, yeah, okay, it's not as big a deal. Yeah. I think they definitely handled everyone. All parties handled it very, very oh, wow. well. Um, just like going back to what we were talking about, being mm -hmm. more professional and keeping up the standard of looking like we're actually professional and care about our image and all that other stuff in esports. He got suspended. He didn't play a few games. Um, and he, I'm pretty sure he was fined a pretty good bit. But he's back now. He uh, made a really good entrance. I'll have to show the video up here. I'll post that in. Definitely uh, very good. He's a uh, Winston main, so he came in walking in like a gorilla. But that was a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. He made some pretty good plays. Uh, nothing on the highlight reel, but he was just a solid player. Had some uh, good moments that. Uh, hey, like I was telling you, that game knowledge, that consistency, I value that more than any hype play. Okay. If you net my team a win consistently, I do not care if you're not making five. All right. That being said, <laughs> Not a Dallas Fuel fan, but if he's being consistent, that I'm looking up to that. That's good. For sure, for sure. And even then, uh, let me see real quick. I'm pretty sure the Dallas Fuel went 2-0 and this uh, week, which is very, very surprising to me. Um, I don't know if it was to anybody else, but they have been one of those lackluster teams. They were supposed to be a very, very good team. They had a stacked roster, and they were trash. So, I believe it was the uh, – let's see, the – Dallas Fuel or the Houston Outlaws, I know in both their matches. I don't remember if the Dallas Fuel ended up winning. Um, yep, Dallas. So I got it pulled up right here. We got the Dallas Fuel that were, went 2 0. We got Seoul that went 2 0. And I know the Houston Outlaws went 2 0 as well. So it was definitely a good week for uh, Texas. Definitely yeah. a good week for Texas. But yeah, awesome to see QCK back. He's looking better than ever. He was having fun with his teammates and everything, everything seemed great. So that's awesome. Uh, what else? Uh, another little quick bit of news, and we'll throw this highlight up real quick. It's not even really a highlight, but just a good little moment in the uh, world of Overwatch. Uh, the Florida Mayhem, they're very known for their extravagant entrances and whatnot. They've done Gangnam Style and Pony Rides and all this crazy stuff. But uh, in recent news of the uh, very, very sad shooting that happened in Florida, they gave a beautiful Florida moment of silence. Um, you know, just good hearted. Um, nothing really more to it. Lead. It's just so nice to see them actually taking ownership of where they're from, really where their team is really contracted to, to uh, contracted, where their uh, board. Where their headquarters are at. Yeah, no, I get what you're saying. That's, so that's a cool really scene. good moment. That's Because you know some of those high school kids, some of them might even watch the Overwatch League. Oh, yeah, for sure. And they had so that's got to the... Uh, Douglas school on him like it was it was an awesome moment I really uh, that's gotta resonate I that's so good that's so big and once again going back to that discussion of representation for mm -hmm. cities and leagues that's that's huge that means a lot like it's just it's one of those heartfelt moments mm -hmm. kind of makes you smile oh yeah for sure I had a big old grin when I saw that I was very very happy with that uh that decision so very very cool and Really not much more news. Uh, we had a few roster changes here and there. Not too important, though. The most important thing, and everyone's favorite, of course, is the highlights. So let's dig into those real quick. All right, so we got a few pretty good clips uh, from this week. A lot of really breakout plays. Um, we got Profit in there. We got a few Soul Dynasty players. It's... A lot of fun, a lot of hype, and I wish I had sound for it because it's. We'll let you see. So first off, we've got uh, Profit plays for the Spitfire in their game versus the New York Excel. Um, New York Excel were 
about to cap the point, win the uh, match, and I think that would have put the game into... I'm pretty sure that would have been a 3-1 in favor of Excel. But uh, not if anything Profit has to say about it. So we'll go ahead and take a look here. Almost and it's not actually his point of view, but you're going to actually be able to see no here. To there are really four or five players. There's going to be five players going on the point. Profit is on the point by himself as Tracer. He actually de Mecco. He's going to say he's staying alive. He actually recalls back. He still has the point on overtime. He's still just dancing around. His teammates are able to come help him. Cool little cool spawn by Sage Elby, but still not enough. Profit is still alive in this instance. He gets a kill on Domeno. Like, he's still alive in a 1v5 on point. He saves it. His team caps the point, and they go on to win the game. Wow. What a hero play right there. That's insane. Um, Legitimately. Man, I love he, Tracers. I, I love Tracers. So it much. is Good Tracer play is insane. Yeah. It's intimidating for the other team, but oh, it's so sure. much fun to watch and to play. Yeah, it was definitely, it was just nuts to watch. He, you're just expecting to see in the kill feed, Profit, but he never showed up. He, was he just, just never. He was, he's the one killing, not getting killed, and he saved the game. And New York XL, or not New York XL, sorry, Spitfire actually went on to win that series overall. So That's actually so hype. It was insane. You think um, the London Spitfire is always going to be New York kill you? Like, because I see that it was another 3-2. I don't know if it. I don't know if it was a reverse sweep, but do you think they're always going to end up beating out Excel in the longer drawn out games? Have to go. I really, I, I'd be interested in that storyline if, like, each time they played, London just gets the upper hand. So I think what's been happening, and just with recent games within this last week, London Spitfire, for the most part, have Excelsior figured out. Now they do drop a few games because Excelsior just has some nutty players. They're just insane. And so they win these crazy team fights just from individual skill. Um, from, but from a team perspective, it really does seem like the Spitfire are able to edge it out just barely each time. And I think we see some of that strategy come into other teams' play as well. They're seeing exactly how Excelsior were being dominated because Excelsior, for the very first stage, for the most part, they were on top completely. Like, no one could touch them. Even the Soul Dynasty were getting murked by them, which... Soul Dynasty has kind of fallen off, but we'll see how they uh, reach back around. But Houston Outlaws, they were able to beat New York Excelsior, if I remember right. correctly. So it's just, everything has been, I think New York Excelsior is going to see a decline. Um, and rather than them really declining, I think all the other teams are getting better. If you watch just... any of the games from last week, all the teams were having very close games. Uh, there are a few blowouts, but for the most part, Almost every single game was just very tight. It was fun to watch. There wasn't anything just like, okay, this is definitely going to be a win for them. Like it was fun to watch. I enjoyed. That's every really exciting. Of I hope. Oh, it's so great. Parody and leagues is always so good. I really don't like to see teams plateau. Like I hope XL maybe is just having a little slump or something because mm -hmm. I want. I like there to be dominant teams. Like not necessarily dominant. They never lose, but like they're staples. Yeah, I don't sure. want I don't want a Patriots. I do want a Cowboys. I want a team that's like, okay, this team is always the very least good. Like at the very least, there are always some like saving graces on that team. For sure. So for sure. that's fun to watch. For sure. All right, we'll go ahead head over to the next clip. Next clip is going to be a Diva ult clip. Those are always my favorite. Being a, uh, I'm not really a Diva main anymore, but you know, always fun to see how they kind of work those ults in. It's Varus main, a diva main. Man, how do I uh, collaborate? I'm on, I'm on Tracer now. Anyways. <laughs> okay, now you're a good man. You're a good man now. But I'm it's definitely interesting to see how some of these pro players um, are able to manipulate Diva's mech when she's ulting because a lot of pro players are able to dodge out of it. They're able to shield, whatever it may be. So it's pretty rare you ever see it actually get a kill. It's more of a zoning ult at this point for uh, mm -hmm. this higher tier of play. But we'll go ahead and jump in. Uh, we've got the Soul Dynasty. They're coming up on point B here. And trying to take a hold. Um, and basically, you're just going to watch it right here. She's getting low, throws it out there, and it's just going to bomb right on top of them. She's going to get four. tactical nuke incoming, drops oh, it right on their head. That's they didn't even see it coming. Insane. Yeah, it was definitely just a beautiful play, and that helped them hold it. And I apologize. They were actually on defend there, and so... 
it was a okay uh, they were did they end up it. saving the point and winning the game or was it i think they did say i i don't play? think they saved the point completely if i remember correctly but i do know that they ended up winning that map but so. the time it bought they ended up winning the map. okay yeah. well that's good that's that's really that's a nice play definitely awesome play to see um let's go into our next one let's see what do i have ah uh, akm so <laughs> being also a prof or sorry a tracer main Soldier just resonates with me, being a CS player. He just point and click, shooty tooty. I kill people. <laughs> and it's beautiful. And this is just a great play, just seeing some raw aim coming from AKM. Really just hey, everybody everybody coming. has that cup. No, I can't do it. Oh, yeah. And really he's just laying down the wire. He doesn't even have ult usually when you see these crazy soldier plays, you see a tactical visor just going off. But really just here he's just real core mechanics, just getting the aim. Getting some real good dinks and just wipes him. Five kills. He would have had six had someone not stole it, but oh, so Shaz ended up jumping off the end. So that's impressive. Definitely, yeah, wow. definitely just so he just holds the line, choke point right there. Yep, just just sits behind his tanks door. and he's just doing a insane amount of damage. His aim is just it's got here right here. He's just doing everything he can. He kills the Genji, kills the Lucio. It's, and who is this against? The purple makes me want to say LA. Right? Yep, Los Angeles Gladiator, the fuel. Ended up beating them, so that's really a nice. great play. And Same. we got one more for you. This is I'm gonna be honest. This is my favorite play. It's not even super amazing in the sense of what happened overall in the game, but it's just a super just flashy, beautiful piece of uh, mechanical outplay. So we'll go ahead okay. and, and jump in here. We've got the uh, New York Excelsior, Florida Mayhem. Florida Mayhem definitely the uh, underdog in this situation, but. Uh, We've got Tavik here, and he's just jumping around on the Genji. Really nothing crazy here. Until... 180 here. Check this out. And reflect. Boom! Right back to the Pharah. Wow, Beautiful, a... just heads up play. Here's the rocket coming. Reflects real quick, and it just goes straight back to her face. Definitely my favorite by far. Just such a fast reaction time. Um, that's insane oh it's just beautiful to watch and i'm not gonna watch it again but yeah it was just <laughs> i'm not gonna watch it again. Yeah, uh, that was a lot of wind up but it was definitely worth it it definitely time. was but oh my gosh it's just so smooth it's just smooth like butter that's all you can uh say really but yeah that's gonna do it for the uh, I, don't, I don't know about uh i think what you were saying before how the soldier 76 he didn't have his ult up but i think it's because that genji stole it tactical visor activated straight up just turned, found the rocket, and hit the pharaoh right out of the sky. Uh, that was just, intense. It was beautiful. It's, And the commentary is even better. I got to figure out all that stuff eventually. But yeah, it was just an amazing play to watch. Mm -hmm. I'm just Usually when I'm watching these, I'm just sitting in bed or sitting in my couch or whatever I may be. I'm just watching. And I have like physically sat up and was like, Did, no, that just happened. Like I was just amazed. you feel amazed. the need to go play some Genji after you saw it? No, I hate Genji. Oh, okay. Well, that's fair. If you're a Genji main, don't watch this. Just go away. You're not Just worth go away. Use. I don't like it. I've you. never actually played Genji. I He's think I ac I think the time I played Genji, I accidentally select change back to Tracer because I basically play Tracer in when Tracer's taken Soldier, yeah, and if they're I both can. taken, I just don't play the game. I just exit all that for. <sighs> yeah, I can't stand him. He annoys me, but whatever. It's not so <laughs> bad and competitive, but when I'm playing like some death match or something like that, just to like help out my aim. They just, mm -hmm. they're annoying. It's literally, tra it's Tracer, McCree, Genji, which the Genji always pops off because it's just easy for him. And then people play Roadhog in Deathmatch, free-for-all Deathmatch. You can't kill him. Yeah, He just, I mean, he just he heals himself. He doesn't die. It's awful. I hate it. That sounds rough. I need to play in community servers, but I'm lazy. But yeah, we'll go ahead and transition this into the uh, standings for overall. And we'll take a look at uh, just from last week. We have some really good... Uh, Basically, I feel like we're almost even in the sense of how everyone has been playing lately, um, rather than the Shanghai Dragons. But for the most part, from what we've seen, just skill-wise and team-wise, there's obviously some discrepancies in the level of skill, but I can't stress it enough. It's just been so fun to watch competitively that there's just teams are... We have the Florida Mayhem taking a game off of, I think, the Excelsior, if I remember correctly, which... Honestly, like, stage one, I would have called you crazy. Like, there's no way. There's no way the Excelsior would lose a map to them. But 
it's just been fun to watch. So right now, what we're sitting at, and I know you won't be able to look at this, Trent, but uh, right now in the standings, we got New York Excelsior up up top. They had that amazing first stage. Uh, they were just the top dog. They did end up losing in the final, though, which was very interesting to watch. But uh, keep in mind, all the finals, all the playoff games, they don't count towards the regular season record. Yeah, it's that classic cloud nine trap card reverse sweep in finals to take the win. <laughs> it's yeah, high started it for that team, and ever since then, it's just been a snowball of oh, we're going to down zero two in the finals. We won. Let's yeah. si- sign the paycheck, boys. Let's go. Throw. It's it's yeah. insane how that team does that so frequently. Oh, it really is. But they're right now their uh, win loss is ten and two. They got a different round differential of 22, so they're plus 22. Uh, and second, we got Houston Outlaws, who are actually 9-3. and three, So they're just one game behind. And what's going to be a really fun game to watch this upcoming week, those two teams play. Oh, really? So, yep. So they could tie them up and even take the lead. Which Saturday is the 3rd. That will awesome. be a good match. Yeah, it's going to be a very, very fun match to watch. So I definitely recommend everyone to tune in for that one. But... uh it's definitely interesting to see how far the outlaws have come. Uh, the very first week or two in the first stage, they were just kind of real mediocre. They had some losses to some not so great teams, um, and they started off pretty bad. Honestly, I'm pretty sure those first three losses. I'm gonna say the first two losses were within the two weeks, and then they got one more loss on their way to, I'll say, from week three and on. They had one loss after that, so. Very. If they would have just come out of the gates firing, they would be in first place, no doubt in my mind, which is really cool to see. I like a lot of the players there. Um, they're just a fun team to watch in general. They're really good. But they also have a map difference of 22. They actually went, oh, man. They didn't drop a map for, like, I think 15 games or something like that. Didn't drop a single map. Like, that's just that's bonkers. Intense. Yeah, it's just bonkers. But in third, we got Soul Dynasty. They are 9-3 as well, but their map differential isn't so great. They're uh, plus 15. They had a breakout season starting off in stage one, but uh, they kind of leveled off and stopped being gods, basically. they came. Back How important do you think that is? So they have the same win-loss as Houston Outlaws, and I get what it means. Mm-hmm. How much weaker do you think Soul Dynasty is considering they'll drop the occasional map? Because honestly, Soul Dynasty, the way their record stands, it reminds me a lot of TSM last year. Like when mm-hmm. NALCS was still best of three, TSM, I think their actual win rate on for their first game was like 60%, maybe even lower. Mm-hmm. If if last season, NA was still best of one, TSM would not have ended in first place in the placement. Mm-hmm. So how much do you think that affects a team like Soul Dynasty? Do you think they're just maybe have their game where they're like, kind of off but then they focus right back up do you think it's endemic what do you think that means to soul dynasty so here's the thing about soul dynasty that's very very interesting they have a 12-man roster which a normal roster is going to be six people so they basically Mm -hmm. have two teams so when something's not working they're able to switch that up pretty quickly within the next game and i mean their coaching staff is amazing um the top uh, coach in Korea from back when, um, uh, what was the league called? I don't remember what the league was called. Basically the top coach in Korea back then. He is the coach for Seoul Dynasty. Um, they just make some really good adjustments. They're able to pack out those wins. Um, but like you said, they their map differential isn't that good compared to what you'd think they would be. Because, they again, they were dominant within the first Yeah, a weeks. seven map differential. That means like seven uh, different points from their next up Houston Outlaws. That means they've lost seven extra maps that Houston Outlaws won. Yep. And I just want to know, like, obviously, I you can only tell us so much. We can only know so much without knowing their actual infrastructure and their comms and all that. Mm-hmm. Are they just goofing up? Are they, you know, relaxing too much? Are they seeing themselves as too good and letting out that free win, you know, reminiscent of, like, when a just top team loses to a bottom-tier team? Is that what's going on? Because I just... It's definitely possible. I'm... It's really, like you said, it's hard to tell, but I do know for a fact they are very, very good at making those adjustments, and we'll definitely see. They actually play the Dallas Fuel. Um, that's the next game that's coming up in the Overwatch League, so we'll we'll see how that comes. We see Dallas Fuel on the rise with QC, QCK. I have such trouble saying that. 
That's so... Say it. Q-C-K. <laughs> That's such a horrible Q-C-K. name. Q-C-K. Q-C-K. That... It's, I don't like Don't it. a lot of Overwatch players have, like, just letters? And I mean... A few of them do. Not trying to rag on anybody's name. A few of them do. And they're not creative. Not... It's okay. But yeah. I'm assuming it's quick, but I bet no one... Who knows? But yeah, anyways... So yeah, if the announcers call you by QCK, that's your name. I'm sorry. Basically, it's basically. like a uh, Febivin. He actually like wants his name to be Febivin, but really. he's called Febivin, and everyone calls him Febivin, and that's his name. Sorry about you, buddy. That's fair. That's fair. So yeah, to go right back on it, we've got London Spitfire in fourth, which is really interesting. They're actually eight and four. They lost to uh, Houston Outlaws last week, and then they beat Excelsior right after that. So. That was a very just interesting. I thought Excelsior were going to just dominate them. They were looking horrible against Outlaws, to be honest. There's a lot of mistakes made. Um, it's very interesting. If you see some of their interviews from when after they won Stage 1, they mm-hmm. even said, we don't think we're the best players here. There's, they're very humble, but there's I honestly think there's a lack of confidence in themselves. And they were surprised that they got first, which is honestly crazy to me because they have some great, great players. But yeah. it's very interesting to see how that'll be moving forward. Um, again, there's definitely Houston a Outlaws fine line them. to walk between that, like being humble and not believing in yourself. And mm-hmm. I really hate seeing it when players are so against themselves. Like you always see it when Western teams go to Worlds and they're like, "We just want to make uh, past groups." Mm-hmm. That's I get not being overconfident. I get saying I get not saying we're going to beat SKT, but I always hate saying we just want to make it out of groups Yeah, because sure. <clears throat> you're already setting yourself up for failure by not letting yourself live more. At least say, I want to make it to semifinals. Like mm-hmm. at least say, I want to be the top four team. I want to be third place. Like mm-hmm. if you're going to say anything at all. Just at least say that, like say, at least I want to make it on this, on the medal. I want to get the medal. Even if it's broad, I want to get it. For sure. It always for makes sure. me so sad to see how disheartened players can get. So I'm really hoping Spitfire gets that fixed. And if it's not a problem they need fixed, at the very least, owns up a little more. Hey, we are the stage one winners. Mm-hmm. We might not be at our top form. This might not be the best we can be, but we can still beat the best. Like, I want them to say that. Like, I want every team to say that. Yeah. Don't be overconfident. Just say, be proud of yourself. Be willing to say you can win games. Yeah, for sure. And lastly, we're, that we're going to cover, we're going to top our top five here. But we got the Los Angeles Valiant, which is really interesting. They are, honestly, they're a solid team. Um, they're very, that's all you can really say about them is they're very just solid. Um, they don't have a lot of flashy, crazy plays. They don't pull out a lot of flashy, crazy wins. But they're not going to lose to any lower tier teams. They're not going to make these crazy mistakes that just lose them the entire map. It's, they're... Very fundamentally sound, but not in the sense that they're good enough to beat the Excelsior or the Outlaws. So what you're saying is they're the gatekeeper to the top four. They're that first guy after you get off Victory Road and you go to play face the final four. That's they're basically the first it. one you play. They're and just I'm gonna the say gatekeeper. like if you beat us, you have a chance against the next top four players. Like you can maybe challenge the top. But if you can't, get out of here with that. That's, yeah, I mean, that's, I think there's actually two of those. We'll go ahead and go to number six. That's Philadelphia Fusion. And the Fusion have actually been looking a lot better. Um, it's just they slowly get better and better, it seems. It's very, very interesting to see how they've uh, developed and gotten from where they started. Because I'm pretty sure the Philadelphia Fusion, they're the team that actually did not get to uh, do any preseason. So their first game was their first game together on stage. It was they didn't get any preseason. I think there was an issue with some visas and stuff like that. But yeah, so they're Interesting. definitely on the rise. Um, but yeah, the rest of the teams we see a few on the rise. We see the fuel. They're on number nine right now. Um, we'll see how that pans out with QCK coming back and just in general, their team just looks better. It just it looks a lot better. Uh, Boston Uprising, they're a team that I actually like. There's a lot of nice players on there. Um, Dreamcaster being one of them. He's a Genji player, but he's fun to watch. So. But uh, he, they're actually six and six, so it's kind of they're very. It's hard to explain how I feel about them. They are fun to watch, but at the same time, they just lose and lose and lose, and they lose very dumb rounds. It feels like um, I think there needs to be working on their teamwork because individually they have a lot of great players. Um, it just seems like the teamwork just isn't entirely there. But yeah, I think that'll wrap it up for the standings. Really, all that matters right now is the top five. But like I said, 
right now, I feel like within the next two or three stages, it's going to be neck and neck. I think we're going to have to look at the top ten just to uh, see like who's in the race and who's not. Uh, one notable thing that I'm going to mention right before, we still have the Shanghai Dragons at 0-12. And now I understand there's a lot of younger players that from the Chinese region that can't play in Overwatch League because you have to be 18 years old to play. Um, I know that one of the players will be coming here soon, I think in the third stage, if I remember correctly. I think I saw that on an interview. Um, but what's really crazy that I was watching, and Monte Cristo was talking about it, there were, I think, two players. There, One's a very good support player, one's another DPS or tank, I don't remember. Um, I can't remember their names, but they actually decided to quit competitive Overwatch and just become streamers. And thus, two of the top Chinese players. Yeah. So, I mean, going where the money's at. I can't it work. really is. But going into stage one, everyone knew that the Shanghai Dragons were probably the weakest team out of everyone. And it's honestly. And I hate to say it, but it's just being proven time and time again. I mean, they're 0 12. They have a negative 35 map difference. It's just. That means they've won one map, right? Uh, like yeah. 12 games times 4. 12 times 4, 48. So I, they've won a few maps. Uh, they've, won, they've won a few more than that. I was, thinking, few, I was but... thinking if there was three games. Excuse me. And what's crazy, too, is if, if you watch them, not all their games are blowouts. Some of them are really close. It's just they can't figure it out. They can't get that W. And it's, it's honestly sad to see, but I'm hoping they're uh, able to turn around eventually. But uh, we'll go ahead and move over to some... <clears throat> sorry. Some matches to look out for this upcoming week for week three. Or are we week two? Sorry, week two. Um, the biggest one that we have Wednesday, which will be the day that this is released. Yeah. Um, got Soul Dynasty versus Fuel. That'll be a fun one. We're going to see how Fuel is, if they're able to take on the big dogs. We're going to see if Dynasty can really wrap up what problems they've been having. Um, if they lose the Fuel, we're going to be scared. Definitely scared for the Dynasty here. Um, on Thursday, we've got a fun one between New York Excelsior and Boston Uprising. The only real fun thing about that is it's the Boston, classic Boston versus New York rivalry. Um, it goes mm, to sports. Yeah. It goes to esports. Um, and if it doesn't, they really try to make it happen on Overwatch League from the caster's point of view. But uh, it's definitely still fun to watch. Uh, there's a bit of a rivalry there, and you got to love rivalries, right? Let's Sorry, see. Boston. I, I already am rooting against you just because the same city as the Patriots. Got know, a lot Boston, of anti fans coming Boston, out of Boston. Man. Well, I I don't know. I'll get it later. sorry about you. <laughs> uh, let's Going see. over and over again, how untrustworthy of a citizen you are. <laughs> oh man! So, uh, so Friday we have a few decent matches. Nothing too crazy. You got Dallas Fuel versus Los Angeles Valiant. That'll be a fun one. Um, on Saturday we have a lot of fun matches. So we got the Philadelphia Fusion versus the London Spitfire. Philadelphia has been up and coming. They're getting better and better. Um, it's definitely going to be fun seeing them tested out against London Spitfire, which we all know they've been just amazing lately. They fall here and there, and we'll see if Fusion is one of those times that they fall. Um, and on top of that, the show match, I think the match of the week, we got the Houston Outlaws versus the New York Excelsior. First place versus second place. It can't get better than that. To That'll be good to teams. watch. Oh, it's going to be a fun and game. I, That'll be Saturday, March 3rd at 5 p.m. Finish it up right after that great game. You're going to get my favorite kind of games, the Clown Fiestas, bottom barrel teams <laughs> fighting off. Yeah. So since you mentioned Shanghai yeah. Dragons versus San Francisco Shock following the two best teams might be some of the two worst teams. And I, I just can't wait to see that Clown Fiesta. I don't know if Overwatch <laughs> Clown Fiestas are quite as good as lead Clown Fiestas. But I think if there's any chance to find out, this will be it. I'm going to call this now. San Francisco Shock, take it 3-1. Oh, that's so boring. I want a tie, and they have to go and over, not overtime, into a tiebreaker just to see it. I like the San Francisco I... Shock. They've got some really good players. They got Tavik. That's the guy that had the Genji, insane Genji play. Um... I thought that was Mayhem. I thought oh, Mayhem. you're right. That's sorry. Yeah, yeah, that's Mayhem. I'm trying to think of. What's the player on San Francisco that I like? Oh, I'm about to look it up. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. I don't know. Maybe it won't be as bad as I'm saying. I Like I said, 
same traits as a League Clan Fiesta, because like whenever I think League Clan Fiesta, I think of Renegades or Dignitas season five or six. Mm. Oh boy, that is the highlight of LCS professional play. I'm pretty sure. For sure. But... For sure. Oh, here's some huge news. Uh, we have Mr. Sinatra. Now you probably don't know who Sinatra is. He played in all the pre leagues that were before Overwatch League. But uh, he is actually on the San Francisco Shock now. I totally forgot about this. Uh, he just turned 18, and boy, this kid is insane. He is this honestly be San Francisco Shock rising up to, or is this going to be? I say this. New? I say this brings him up above second to last. I don't think this is going to be a top team yet. Definitely going to be one that could take a few games off the top teams and maybe even get to become a mid-tier team. Okay. But Sinatra okay. is okay. I like, a fun I like the predictions you're making. Yes. I like the predictions you're making. I'd, I'd be excited to see. Parody in League is always good. I'm hoping Shanghai Dragon's picking up. I'm hoping the Flora and Mayhem pick it up. From what I hear, though, if your league from the first to ninth place position has players all looking to compete or teams all looking to compete, at least mm -hmm. for the top five spots... That's a good league. That's a for competitive sure. good league. Every, Like I always say, every sports league needs a Cleveland Browns. If that's the Shanghai Dragons <laughs> spot for the moment, that's their spot. That's their responsibility. Someone's got to hold down the bottom. For sure, for sure. I couldn't agree with you more. Well, I think that's going to wrap it up for us. Um, I'm My name's Brennan. You can follow me on Twitter at BrennH underscore. Uh, I'm joined by Trent. You can just follow him. You at... can follow me at Twitter at Avius Gaming. Um, and I'll hand it back to Brennan to close out the show. It was a great time hosting our pilot episode of The Recall. I think we'll be back next week, same time, to do it all over again. For sure, for sure. We appreciate you guys watching, and this has been Recall. Take care. I stopped recording. Three, two, okay. one. Boom. Oh, wait. We got to do this. Three. My thing's delayed. Yeah, so, so I got to go out. So like, I go at two. Between two and one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Three. I, I'll go between two and one. Okay. Three, two, one. Boom. <laughs> Close. <laughs> you're, just such a, you're, it. you're like, ah, oh, come on. You got to high five me. Like, it's like slow. Like, even when I'm like boom. throwing my hand. Uh, Try it one more time. Okay. Three, two, one. Boom. Beautiful.